Alright everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about installation of a Camco Kuma water heater in my 2023 Ford Transit fan conversion. So when, when you build your RV camper van, uh, if you want a hot water heater, there's a few options. Seems like a lot of the DIY van builder folks use like one of the Bosch 120 volt electric hot water heaters. And I originally went with one of those in my ProMaster van conversion that I did and quickly replaced it with the water heater that I'm getting ready to show you here. All right, so if you look here, obviously I've got the water heater installed where it's going to go in my van build. This is a six gallon uh, water heater and you can heat the water in one of two ways. You can use the 120 volt, 1500 watt heating element so you got to figure you need an inverter or to be on shore power to use that. I just have it hooked to a switch here. See it's labeled water heater. You just flip it on and off. That turns the electric element on and off. Once it reaches temperature, which I believe is about 120 degrees, the electric element will turn off. The other way to power the water heater is with engine coolant. So you can see I've got two 5 8 inch heater hoses that run from the front and this makes a coolant loop with the factory engine coolant. So I did a whole video uh, if you have a ProMaster on how I installed one of these in my ProMaster van conversion and there'll be a link in the description to that video. So one thing with this water heater um, I, I got a lot of comments uh, about this. Some of the other brands that uh, heat water in a similar way with engine coolant. They have a thermostatic bypass valve that's installed between the hot and the cold water uh, inlet and outlet that keeps the water from getting too hot when you're on engine coolant. So I never had that problem with my first one. Um, we always, you know, after we got done driving somewhere, if we took a shower or needed hot water, the maximum temperature it ever got was around 110 degrees. Now, I'm not really quite sure why that is. When you think about it, the coolant running in here from the engine has the potential to be 200 degrees or hotter, you know, 180 to 220 degrees. And in theory, you could effectively transfer that entire temperature to the water that's in the tank here through the loop. And obviously that that's way too hot to have of water in the tank. Now, this company in the installation manual, they do not say anything about using a thermostat bypass valve. And like I said, we never had that problem, but I understand that a lot of you have that concern. So I'm gonna show you today how I installed this and I'm going to be installing a thermostatic bypass valve that will regulate the temperature no matter how hot it is in the tank. The one added benefit, which makes it worth it for me, is that it will prolong your shower. So you can basically, if you get the temperature to somewhere you like, you can really just reach over and flip the hot on and not even touch the cold. I'll probably have it a little bit hotter than we like and have to use some cold. That way there's a little bit extra. But it will, by allowing the hot water or the water to get hotter and then mixing it with cold water, you're effectively making it last much longer than just using all the hot water straight up out of the tank. So Kuma does make a thermostatic mixing valve. You can see it here. Part number is TMV HG110D. It comes with half inch connections, which is what our plumbing is in here. So really all this is is a Cash Acme, you know, thermostatic mixing valve. It's that's been uh, rebranded as Kuma, but it does come with these really nice quick fit connections, which are going to make plumbing this thing in much easier. So you just go ahead and install the half inch fitting and then you use the quick fit and a gasket to install it. Now it says cold, hot, and then this is the output. So basically we're going to thread this line here into the output of the hot water heater. So at the top here, and then the arrow here, that's showing the direction. This is the hot water where it will leave the tank to go into the plumbing system. And then the C is for the cold water. 
how that will work is there will be a T installed on the cold water line and then we'll use a stainless line to connect the cold water over to the cold water input. And then what this valve does is it senses the temperature of the water and this is all uh, manual control, obviously there's no electronics. And it mixes as much cold water as necessary to regulate the output temperature coming out of here. So it's pretty handy. And then if you want to turn the water down, you just simply rotate it to the right to adjust the temperature or turn it up like this. Now it's factory preset at about 120 degrees, which is good. We're not going to mess with that. I like 120 to 130 degrees. Now if you have uh, children uh, and you're worried about your kids getting burnt, you can obviously turn it down much lower to around 100 degrees. That way, if someone just grabs the hot water and turns it on, you don't have to worry about being scalded by the hot water. And you also don't have to worry about the difference between uh, you know, water in the tank being potentially hotter when you've run the engine versus when you're on the electric element. It will keep it consistent. All right, so on a transit, there's a couple different ways to connect the coolant lines. So some transits come with a factory rear heating option from the factory. There will be two 5 eighths inch lines down at the bottom of the engine in the front of the van. You simply pull off the little uh, U connector and attach heater hoses and run them to the back. In my case, I did not have that. Uh, the Ford uh, Body Modifiers Guide for the Transit recommends installing the water heater basically in series with the factory heater core. So on my ProMaster, I installed it in parallel and then I had two shutoff valves. And the reason I did that was because if you were to get a leak in one of these lines in the rear, you could shut off the whole rear system. Now, unfortunately, under the hood of the Transit, there really is not room for shutoff valves. So I was basically forced to go ahead and hook it up the way that Ford recommends. So basically, the coolant loop comes out of the hot engine, goes into the factory heater core, comes out of the heater core. And the reason for that is that way your front heat always has priority, like in the winter. And then when it comes out of the heater core, it runs into one of these lines. So under the hood, I just basically cut the outlet line in half, stuck in a 90 degree uh, glass filled nylon 5 8 fitting, connect it to the heater hose. Um, the heater hoses up under the hood and where they run down uh, the front part of the frame are covered in a fiberglass uh, heat insulation to protect the hose from exhaust heat, just like everything else that's under the hood in that area. And then they run down and they go down the driver's side of the van. You need to run them down the driver's side even though my hot water heater is on the passenger side. And then once I got to a safe point from the exhaust, they are transitioned into three quarter inch uh, pipe insulation like you'd put in your house. You can see it runs down the frame between the gas tank and my gray water tank, then runs across over the drive shaft and over the exhaust where it is covered in more uh, fiberglass insulation to protect from any uh, radiant exhaust heat when the van is sitting still. It goes into two 90 degree fittings and then up to this two inch PVC pipe in the floor, which is where I have my uh, drain valve, my blow off valve, and then my two five eights heater hoses. doesn't matter which one is in or out back here on the water heater. It's just a loop basically going through the middle of the tank. This is a aluminum tank. Works very good. You don't have to worry about corrosion with aluminum like you do a steel tank. All right, so now I've told you how it's hooked up. Obviously you can see this is my drain valve here. It's a three quarter inch line from the factory and they have just like a three quarter inch hose connection and I replaced that with just a regular old, um, this is a half inch line and it goes down and it runs through the floor. That way I can easily drain this for winter storage. Now, when you fully do drain the tank, there is about an eighth of an inch of water in the bottom of the tank, just due to the shape of it, where they couldn't get the drain valve right at the very bottom. 
what I usually do in this case since the drain valve is facing forward depending on which way you orient this uh, I have a hill in my driveway I'll just pull the front of the van down the hill and then open this it allows it to drain the max amount of coolant and I'll also open this valve here uh, to allow air in so I get the maximum amount drained and then I put it in bypass that way we don't get any antifreeze into the water heater itself so to bypass it basically just have a shut off here before the input to the tank and then a shut off on the hot water outlet and then you can just I have a T line going in between them that I open and that allows the cold water just to flow directly across into the hot water side to when it comes time to winterize it all right so some people ask do you need an expansion tank on this side on the cold water side of the the hot water heater well Kuma says no uh, I did not use one in the last build I did not use one in this build I've had no problems now the water does have the potential to expand and they do say in the instructions that it will it also depends on the type of pump you have uh, the type of sure flow pump I have says that it does not need an expansion tank so I've not had any problems uh, worst case scenario is you might get a if it starts to get too hot and expand too much in the tank, you'll just get a little bit of bleed off through the pressure relief valve, which they say is normal, which is why you don't just want this terminated inside your cabinet here. That's why I have it going through the floor and out of the van. That way, if there is a little bit of bleed off, it's safe. And if there's ever some kind of catastrophic, you know, failure, uh, it goes right down through the bottom of the van. We don't have to worry about it. All right, so since I already have this all installed, I'm basically retrofitting it would have been nice to have had this planned a little better when I first did it, but so you get to see how I retrofit in this valve to my existing installation. So it's pretty tight quarters in here, but I have to start by disconnecting the cold water supply and getting a T installed. To do that, I bought some of these uh, stainless steel half inch T's. So I'll just need one of those. Uh, it is a female connection going into the tank, so I'll just thread this in there. And I should be able to just hook this right back up to it. And then I'll have a single outlet for cold water. I'm going to take one of these stainless steel half inch lines on both sides. And we will connect that. And that will be the bridge over to our valve here. This is some PTFE thread sealant I'm putting on. All right, so obviously I have the quick connect on the hot water outlet, which will go to there. I'm gonna go ahead and install the outs in the in here. And then I can just set this in place and thread that one on because I need to do a little more plumbing. So I'm gonna take that half inch by half inch fitting that I removed from the water heater down here. And then I'll thread it here to the bottom to the out that way I can reconnect my supply line to the van and I'll, it's gonna be the same thing on the cold water inlet we'll need another one of these or even a 90 to get this new cold water supply line hooked to the side here also in the kit they give you three of these rubber gaskets two of them have screens you want to make sure that the screens are on the cold and hot inlet you want to make sure that they're facing the bulge side is facing out from the device like this. And then the third one does not have a screen. It's for the outlet. It just protects uh, debris from getting in and clogging the mechanism. All right, so this huge contraption is kind of what we got going on now. Let's see, kind of made a 90 out of what I had available. So now we'll get that last rubber gasket put in. We'll get this kind of tightened in place, make sure all my hoses connect. All right, so hopefully this makes sense now. We've got our cold supply coming in. You can see it's pretty tight. It's teed right there. So 
fill up the water heater, fry pressure, and then the secondary line will allow cold water to flow over to the mixing valve. It will come into the mixing valve here, cold, the C, and then it'll mix with the hot water coming out of here. And then this is our output, our supply line, which goes through another braided line and then into the hot water supply. Now all I gotta do is pressurize everything, make sure that we don't have any leaks. And then I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna start the vehicle, let it run for a while. Get the water heater all heated up with engine coolant and then just turn on the water and make sure it's not too hot. Then again, there is a little bit of adjustability. It's just simple. If you take a thermometer, stick it in the water, you can just dial the water temperature down or up. For some reason, you do need to raise it above 120 degrees, which is the factory preset. You can do that if you take the little screw out of the top of here and lift up and reset the cam. It shows you, it comes with instructions with uh, the mixing valve. We'll show you how to do that. They don't really want you to do that, but if you need to, you can. So I'm gonna start pressurizing the tank. Turn it on here. Pump's running. I don't know when it's full because it's going to start to get full water pressure. So we're fully heated up. And we're going to turn on the hot water. I adjusted it so it would be about 130 degrees. So yeah, it's too hot to touch. Now I'm just going to rotate this with my hand all the way to the right. And it turns it significantly down. See, now I can just hold my hand under it. That'd be comfortable for a shower right there. And if I turn it all the way back up. It's like too hot. I'm about halfway here. Perfect. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap up this video. I just wanted to show you how I hooked up this uh, Camco Kumo water heater and the hot water mixing thermostatic mixing valve just to make it a little bit of a safer installation so hopefully it's helpful again i'll have links to all the stuff i used in the description for your convenience if you have any questions or comments be sure to leave them below thanks for watching and until next time we'll see you later